Good day, good day, everybody. The time has come. I'm here to rebuild the bunk heater to do it right. Like I was telling you in previous vlogs, my friend Jim here uh, from the States sent me a rebuild kit and everything I need. New glow plug, all the tools I need, new screens. I bought a new blower motor for the bunk heater as well. So I've already been here working this uh, morning, getting it out of here, and here it is. Ready to be rebuilt. I just wanna show you, uh, I had some difficulty <laughs> getting it out, but I figured it out. So for this, we're gonna need the flashlight. Okay, I'm gonna crawl underneath here. I'm gonna show you where this is here. Okay, right there, you see it? Right there is, I take those four bolts out, disconnect the exhaust, the intake and the fuel line, and pull it out of there. It wasn't that hard, actually, now that I know how to do it, it would be pretty quick, but I had to figure out how to do it first. So, oh, that was fun. Some YouTube videos, and now I'm a bunk heater remover expert. You might say, probably not. So as I film this video today, I wanna give a disclaimer that this is not a how-to video. This is not a tutorial video. This is not a training video. This is not a how do you rebuild a bunk heater video. I'm not, I'm not a teacher for that. I'm just showing you my experience as I learn and how I do it. I've never done this before. Sort of have no idea what I'm doing. Though, like I said earlier, uh, I watched some YouTube videos, so I'm practically an expert now. <laughs> so don't, uh, don't, I hope you didn't come here hoping to learn how to rebuild an S-Bar heater. Just so you know, if you're new and that's why you clicked on the video, wanted to let you know that right away. But please stick around for the rest of the video. I have tons of other videos online. Subscribe to the channel. We make daily videos, mostly about trucking, but also about my family a little bit. Just the whole lifestyle in general. Let's get to it. So I've gotten it out of the truck. Now it'll be a lot easier to work on it than having it underneath there. It was very difficult because in my truck, the bunk doesn't fold up like in some other trucks. Some trucks, you know, the bed flips up. Mine doesn't do that, let me show you. So looking into the side here, that's my Odyssey mattress. It's amazing. This bed frame does not fold up. And that mattress does not come out of the truck. It is too big. If I take it out, it's not going back in. So I had to get the mattress out, put it over the front seats to open up this area here. It's a big pain. And then I had to unscrew this panel here. I put that over there on the other side to get into here. That's where the bunk heater is. It's, there's a wall underneath here and over there and here. It's blocked in there. There's no other way to get at it but like this. It's a big pain in the butt. I've got my flashlight now. I'm gonna see if I can shine it in there for you from here. You can see that's where the bunk heater was right there. The blower tube is on this side here, on the inside. That's my heat, my truck heat for the bunk. But that right there, it's hidden away in there. Don't get me wrong, it's in a very convenient, out of the way place. But if you want to work on it or fix it, it's very inconvenient. But it's the way it is. It's the way the truck is. I didn't do that. Uh, I bought the truck like that. I probably would have done it the same way, to be honest. Where else are you going to put it? Maybe one day, once I redo this truck and uh, refurbish it and everything, maybe I'll put in a bunk that just lifts up, you know, on shocks or something. See if that's even an option. I don't know. But I'm going to start rebuilding this now. See what I can... Uh, See what I can come up with. Hopefully we can get this thing working. So what this thing does, if you're not familiar with trucks or uh, with these, this is an Airtronic D2 S-Bar heater. It runs off diesel fuel from my fuel tanks and a little bit of battery power. Very, very little. The only thing that uses battery power is the fan that's in here. You open this up. There. This fan here uses a little bit of electricity 
I was told that uh, the amount of power it uses is equivalent to about one LED light. So it's sort of like leaving one LED light on your trailer overnight. It's not going to kill your battery. It would take a long time to kill your battery. So it can run overnight. No problem. And then it takes a drip of diesel fuel and it keeps your cab warm. It produces heat and blows heat into your cab. That way you can stay warm at night and you don't have to idle your engine, your whole big diesel engine at night because that costs a lot of money and maintenance to constantly be idling your engine. You don't want to do that for long periods of time. It gums up your engine, your injectors, wears it out, and you want that engine to last long because that's the most expensive part of this whole operation is that motor. You want to save that as much as possible. So I always say it's cheaper to buy a new starter than to rebuild your engine. Every time that truck stops, turn it off. I also have one of these, it's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. It heats up the fluids in my engine. That's in this little white box. Oh, you can't see it. Behind my tarps back there, there's a little white box. That's where I keep that one. But uh, that's an engine heater. So my engine stays warm and my cab stays warm and I don't have to idle the truck. I don't have to. It's cheaper to do that than to rebuild an engine. And it's cheaper to shut it off every time you stop. Every time you stop anywhere, I'm not talking like traffic lights or anything. I leave it running at the traffic lights, don't worry. But <laughs> you shut it off as much as you can and you start it up when you need it. And as soon as you don't need the engine. Some people always say, oh, but that'll wear out your starter faster. Yeah, I know. Wouldn't you rather the starter be worn out than the entire engine? <laughs> you can replace a starter a few hundred bucks. <laughs> An engine. That's like $50,000, like fifty dollars to $90,000, depending on what do you want. You want a new one, you want a rebuild, you want an in-frame rebuild, you want a complete top to bottom rebuild, fifty to ninety, to 50, let's say fifty dollars to $100,000. These things, brand new, cost about $1,200, $1,200, somewhere in there, around the $1,000 mark. These rebuild kits are you can get for like $100 and some. Way cheaper. The only thing that's not covered in this is my time. I could be at home right now. I would like to be with my family, but uh, right now, since we're going through the IVF process uh, for fertility and stuff, we're trying to have another child. It's very, very expensive. We just spent $18,000 uh, last week, and that's just the beginning of the second round of IVF. We're going to be between twenty-five dollars and $30,000 said and done when it's all done. So with that being said, that's why I'm trying to save a little bit of money and fix this myself if I can at least try I have to at least try to fix it myself and if I still can't get it fixed well then I'll go to my friends at PBX uh, Peter Bill of Steinbeck and humbly walk in the door there with my tail between my legs and my head hanging and say I tried if I couldn't fix it can you fix it please <laughs> but now that I have it out I mean if, if I can't get it running now I have it out I'll just bring them this can you here take it fix it I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get this done though, I hope. I've got a new little plug, or start part, I got a new plug for it, new fan motor. I'll clean it all, I'll get all the soot out of there. Let's see, Let's see how it goes. I'll update you as the time goes on. Uh, once again, I'm not trying to teach you how to do this. This is sort of just for entertainment. This is a day in my life. If you're new to the channel, again, go check out my playlists. I've been making videos for like 12 years. Uh, they're all organized in playlists. You can check them out. This is just part of the life of owning a truck. I'm looking at that fifth wheel on my screen there. Need to grease that. All right, so we've got it mostly taken apart already. I got to take out these three screws in here yet to get to the combustion chamber. I've taken out the glow plug or the, the plug already. It's looking pretty sooty. That came out of uh, here. Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to get a good shot in there, but it's black with soot. This is the new one. You can see right beside it, it's already, already a lot cleaner. Get that installed, I'm gonna get in here, clean it all out, get some new screens in there. The screens are in here as well, you can see these little Small guys in there. If my camera decides what it what to focus on, come on, camera, work with me. It's not very nice. There we go. 
switching to my GoPro because it's just it's it's too much to get that camera to focus all the time. So let's look at this again. Let's take it over here and show you. So this is the old plug, and this in here is the new one. You can see that this one's all black. Got these new screens in here. We're making progress. So much easier to vlog with this. I have a GoPro Hero 10 in my hand right now. And my other camera that I was using, if you're new to the channel, is a Sony A7C. Wonderful camera. This camera is amazing. But uh, it takes a lot more effort to use. It gives a much better quality shot. It also does very good in low light because I have this uh, Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens on it. Does amazing in low light, so I like to use it when it's dark outside. It's not dark in here, so I don't need to use that. It's just, anyways, sidetracked. Let's get these, I got one out here already. Let's get these other screws out of here. Then we'll clean out that combustion chamber, switch out the screens, put the new plug in, and put it all back together. New gaskets right here. And uh, let's see what it looks like inside that chamber. It's going to be black with soot. I don't know when the last time this thing has been serviced. I bought the truck with it. And I've had the truck... This is my second winter with the truck now. Uh, the owner before me had this truck for eight years. owner before that had it for... Uh, five years? Something like that. It's a 2008. So, yeah, I know. It's dirty right now. It's, it's winter time outside. Those of you who live in better climates than me... Aren't you lucky? It's very hard to keep them clean. I, I try to keep the salt rinsed off at least, but it's a story for another vlog. I gotta get this done because I wanna be home for supper time if possible. But you know me, if it's a two hour, three, four hour job, it'll take me all day. So this is the burner motor, I believe. And I might wanna replace this thing too. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can, uh... yeah, it's, yeah, it's dirty. I'm gonna see if I can clean this out as good as I can. Inside here is the chamber. Look how dirty and sooty that is. Here, let me get the camera out here. I mean the flashlight. Uh, it's pretty dirty. Yeah. And there's the exhaust out of there. We'll get this cleaned out the best we can. And, uh, I mean, this thing here, I gotta pull a screen, filter screen, out of there and replace it. I mean, I guess we could soak this in carburetor cleaner, maybe. But, oh, yikes. Hopefully uh, this will do the trick though, without doing that. So if it still doesn't go, I guess the next option would be to replace this part. I should have bought this part. I didn't uh, think of that. So I caved. I went and asked my dad for some help. <laughs> These are his wire brushes. I'm cleaning out the, the burn chamber in here of all the soot. It's working very well. I needed his help with this. Inside there, I don't know if you can see it. See that little circle? There's a screen in there. The old screen did not want to come out. For the life of me, I couldn't get it out and I was just destroying it, trying to get it out. So I went to dad's shop, which is nearby here. Very similar to this one. It's his, and he's got all the tools known to mankind there, so I knew uh, he would have it. And guess what? He didn't have a tool for this. So you know what he did? He made one. <laughs> ah. If there ever was a superhero, his name would be Dad. So to get in here, I needed uh, a tool that would go in and have a hook. Go in and hook it out, right? So he grabs a little piece of uh, steel wire and he grabs his vice grip and he grabs his grinder. <laughs> just bends it to shape. Ding, ding, zing, zing, zing. There you go. That's the tool. Just... Didn't quite work uh, as well as we'd hoped because I had already destroyed it trying to take it out here with the wrong tools. So uh, uh, we got it up to nearer to the surface here. And then he had these tiny little needle nose, like these long needle nose pliers. And we were able to get in there and pull it out. And then uh, put the new one in. 
So, thanks, Dad. You know, I was telling him, I try to do everything myself. You know, <clears throat> I'm 35 years old, I can do it myself. Most times. But it's nice to know he's right nearby if I <laughs> need his help. He got it out of there, we got the new screen in there, the new filter. So now I'm pretty much uh, just cleaning out the burn chamber, getting all the soot out of there, and I'm gonna put everything back together, put it back in the truck, screw it in, plug it in. Actually, before I screw it in, I'll probably uh, test it because if it still doesn't work, I'm gonna have to replace it or bring it to someone, someone else. But I think this will work. I think this is gonna work. So I got a few more steps to do here, and uh, and we'll be hopefully good to go. I should have probably bought a new burner. But we cleaned this out really good, so I, I, I think it'll still be good. I think it'll still be good. So I'm putting the burner back in. It's got a new gasket on there. Screw that in real tight. All the way around. Now that I know how to do all of this, this is actually very simple, and I don't know why I would pay someone to do all of this. Unless if I did it wrong and it doesn't work, well then I understand why I would pay somebody. Let's see, let's see. Get this all in there, all sealed up, get the new plug in there. Oh yeah, get that on there nice and tight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I gotta put the new plug in. This is the old one. This is probably what the main problem was, to be honest. It's got a cover on it. Take that off. So much better. Careful, and it comes with a special tool, a socket with a slit on the side so that you can get the wires through there, right? You can get the socket over the wires and the wires stick out the side. Like, <clears throat> so you go like this, put the wires through there, right? That over that, and screw it in. Make sure that these wires don't get tangled up in it, though. <laughs> you know what? First, we can do it but with our hands. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, oh! You see these wires? They always want to have a party. They want to get involved. This isn't about you guys. It's not about you guys. Okay, so that's tight. Now, I slip this little slit over these here. That go down over that. Come on. Come on. There we go. See? And I can tighten that on really good. Look at this. And without any put without putting any pressure on the wires, you want to slip this seal cover into there. Seal that up. There we go. There. Okay. That's in there now. And that should be the main problem. Like, that should be the main fix to the problem. We got all this put together. Now we need to get the gasket for here and then put the new, the new blower motor on. This one. That goes on here like this. Where's the gasket? Is this the gasket? Nope. Is this the gasket? Nope. Is this the gasket? Yes, it is. Let's put it on correctly. 
There we go. Make sure that we have everything done so that once we seal the gasket, we don't gotta open it again. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay. Screw these on, good and tight. And then we're ready to put it all back in its casing. Go and hook it up in the truck. Turn it on, see if it'll see if it'll work. The moment of truth. Man. As long as this is all it takes and this works, like this was very simple. There's nothing to be worried about. If you guys are thinking about rebuilding your S-Bar 2 or just cleaning it out, if you have the time, I, I'm lucky I have a, a fortunate to have a warm shop to work in. But uh, even at summer, in summertime, if the weather's nice where you are, this is really simple to do. It's really easy to do. You gotta go underneath your truck, uh, disconnect the mount. There's four bolts on the bottom here, and the mount and the, the fuel line intake and the exhaust. Just disconnect that from the bottom underneath the truck. Then go inside, literally just pull it up, pull it out. And then it's just a few screws. You take off the blower motor, replace the gasket. Make sure you go on Amazon or something, get a uh, for me, it was an Airtronic D2 rebuild kit. This was sent to me by a friend, by Jim. Thanks, Jim. I really do appreciate you sending this rebuild kit to me with all the gaskets and everything that I need. And uh, you take that all apart. You take the burner out. You have to have one of these special tools, though. And this comes with the rebuild kit that Jim sent me. It is the socket that you need, but it has that slit on the side, you see? Like I was showing you, that's so that you can get over the wires because you can't take the wires off the plug. It'll make perfect sense once you get in there. And there's a ton of videos you can watch online that are tutorials. I'm gonna repeat one more time, disclaimer, it's not a tutorial. I'm not trying to teach you how to do things. I'm just sharing my experience of fixing it with you. It's a vlog. Uh, it's for entertainment purposes. That's what I am, I'm an entertainer. I'm not an educator, I'm not a trainer. I mean, I can share you like, I'm sure you could learn something off this here, and I can I, I try to share you uh, with you some tips on the road, things that work for me. But I always tell you, go double check, make sure that I'm right. I'm not here trying to tell you how to do things, I'm just sharing my life with you, just chatting with you online. That's the purpose of my channel, is just to hang out. Not to, uh, I wanna be clear about that, because I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing all the time. and <laughs> I'm a normal guy, just like you. I'm learning as I go, learning new things every day. I don't know it all. I wish I did, because that would make it a lot easier. No, I don't know it all. I know very little sometimes. That's the one I wanted. Yeah, okay, let's get these tightened up here. I'm gonna have to get a better angle on this. So I tighten these up with my screwdriver, but I'm gonna go in with the uh, uh, the socket wrench anyways, just to make sure it's good and tight and that that gasket has a good seal, right? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off of here. I'm just gonna put it onto my, just to give it a little bit more of a, a seal, right? I wanna make sure it's tight. Oh, okay. without stripping it, Josh, not too tight. soft metal on these screws. <clears throat> Just make sure that that gasket has got a good seal. Okay, oh, Josh. Again, don't wreck your bits. Oops, this is the old glow plug. Oh, look at this. The old glow plug just fell off the table. Is that what it's called, a glow plug or is it a spark plug? It just fell off the table anyways and uh, literally just broke off. That's how fragile and brittle it was. So this was probably definitely the problem. I couldn't even reuse this now if I wanted to, it broke. Okay, well, hopefully putting the new one in here solves everything, right? While I was in there, I cleaned it all out, put a new blower motor on. <laughs> I think I'm pretty happy. I think I'm pretty happy. I think this is gonna work. I have a good feeling. We're all done now. So now, oh, I've gotta put the wiring back on here now. This. Okay, 
So green goes in the center. In there, they are different sizes, so they're not supposed to fit into each other's plugs. So that's what they tell me anyways. Let's make sure that all these wires aren't all tangled. Okay, Just this. What does this get plugged into? Oop, 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 oop. Taped. This gets plugged right into here. Right. Okay. Make sure all these wires are in here correctly. Hmm, I think I want that to go under those. We're almost to the moment of truth. Got this all put back together. Got to put the shell back on now, or put it back in its shell. Which means, yes, this in here like this. Make sure that all these wires are in their appropriate places. This side here, you can see. All these wires have got to be in their proper places so they're not rubbing on everything. Okay, got the bottom on. Attempt to put the top on. Okay, there we go. Click and stopping you on this side. Click, click. Okay, there it is. The end. In here. Got this rubber seal back on the bottom. Very gently. So that seals against the floor like that. Okay. Okay, so now we'll go throw it back in the truck. We'll hook up the fuel line and uh, the air intake, the exhaust, it's easy, just dunk, dunk, dunk. Before I screw it down and screw it in there, I'm gonna, well, you know what? I may secure it with just two for now, just to secure it in there. I'm gonna try turning it on, see if it works. And if it works good, great. If not, well, it's not a waste of a day because I learned one way not to fix one of these then. But there's nothing more I can do. This thing is now rebuilt. It's not like rebuilding a motor where you gotta take pistons and rings out, right? This is all you can do to fix this. If it still doesn't work, there's bigger issues and I gotta replace the whole thing, I'm pretty sure. So let's hope that that's not the case. Let's give it a shot. Come on, Blue. Right there, I'm gonna grab the tools that I need. I won't need too many tools in here, actually. I'll just need to put it into its spot and I'll have to go under the truck, down there, hook everything up. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. I hope it works. All right, I gotta climb in under that mattress into the back there. Ugh. So you can see me. Uh, nervous laughter, nervous laughter. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I gotta push that up with my head. One second. Oh, oh, push that up with my head. We gotta get into here. Okay. All right. Let's go back just a bit. Stay there. It's up there. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. Oh. Yes, yes, okay. All right. Whew. Okay, so here's the heater. That's where it's got to go. There's a plug for it there. See, it's pretty simple. You just throw it right in the, the mount there and then secure it from the bottom. 
One second here. There we go. Just like that. You know what? I can probably test it like this without hooking any of that. Oh, I gotta hook the fuel up anyway. <laughs> it won't work without hooking the fuel up. Okay. Well, I know you can't really see it, but it's in here now. Now for my least favorite part, going under the truck and hooking everything up under there. It's really awkward, and but it's 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 got to be done. All right, here's all the tools and parts I'm gonna need under there. <sighs> I don't know what I'm trying to do. All right, all right, let's put you there. Come with me, my tools. We're going on an adventure. The adventure nobody asked for. Where are you? There you are, okay. It's done. Now for the big test. Yikes, my hands get sweaty. Yeah, okay, so everybody cross your fingers, cross your toes. So I can turn it on from right here. We'll see what happens. Does it have power? The red light came on, so it has power. Maybe it takes a little bit to boot up. I don't hear it turning on yet though. You can hear that now? So I've got the fan motor on just to check the blower motor that I replaced. All it does is it blows air, just straight air, it's like a fan. So that's working. Let's try the heater again. So we'll turn that off. That was not working before, so at least I know the new blower motor is working. And the unit is getting power. We got the fan running. You hear that clicking? It's coming from over here. There's the burner. It's working. Oh, it's working. Yes. I took the cover off the top here just to see what was going on. And uh, I guess it just needed a second to get going. I know you can't really see anything because it's so dark, but got the cover back on. And it's blowing hot air. And it's sounding a lot healthier than before. Oh, that feels good. I'm gonna run it through a couple of tests here just to make sure, but <laughs> I think we got it. Okay. Now that I'm out here, listen to how much healthier that sounds. That's how it's supposed to sound. Thank you. Okay, well, like I said, a couple more tests yet. And then uh, we got to take it on the real test of taking it out on the road and seeing how it does on the road. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling. I think we did it. I think it's finally, finally fixed. There's no smoke. I learned how to do something new. If you've been following my channel over the past like four months, you uh, know how satisfied and happy I am right now. <laughs> I've tried everything aside from pulling it all apart and cleaning it out, putting a new burner in there or a new uh, glow plug, new gaskets, new fan motor, saved myself several hundred dollars in a repair and over a thousand dollars in replacing it. Let's not get too excited though. I'm trying not to get too excited. We still gotta, still gotta finish the tests here. Man, I really need to grease that fifth wheel. Woo! This calls for a celebratory Pepsi. So the test that I ran now was, I turned the temperature all the way down to the point where the heater turned itself off. 
because it was warm enough. And then I crank it all the way back up to see if it'll restart itself and start the heater up again. It sounds so much healthier than it did before too. I hope it stays like this. But now that I know how to take it apart, I think this should be an annual thing that you all do with your S bar. I'm not, again, I shouldn't be telling you what to do. I'm no expert. I think that it's a good idea to, I should reword it. I think it's a good idea to clean those things out once a year. If not once every two years, like what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. I think what I'm gonna do is every, every fall before it starts getting cold, I'm gonna start it up and test it. And what I'll probably do is take it out again, clean it all out, redo the gaskets. Maybe I don't have to re, like, uh, reinstall the plug every time. But if I just put new gaskets in there, get in there with the wire brush, clean it all out, make sure that everything can breathe properly. So that by the time winter time hits, it's good to go. And I don't gotta worry about this in February. All right, now to get this mattress back in the back and get it ready to go. So we'll be leaving on a trip tomorrow. I don't have anything planned right now on me, but uh, it is a holiday here at home, so no one's in the office today. I'll have to call in first thing tomorrow morning and uh, I'll probably head out late in the morning. That's what I'm thinking, because if I call them in the morning, I'll probably call them. They get in around seven, so I'll give them an hour to get settled down, get their computers booted up, figure out what's going on. Call them about eight, 8.30 figure out what's going on, come to the truck, get the truck started, ready to go, be there before noon to hook up to a trailer and then go from there. You know, maybe we'll go to Kenora, maybe we'll go west, maybe we'll, I don't know. All I know is I gotta stay close to home now because of Britt's whole IVF. Uh, we got a bunch of appointments coming up so I'll be staying in my usual region for a bit. But we can't drive with the mattress like this, so. Ugh. Get this thing back in here. Okay, how did I do this? How did I do this? Okay. Uh, come on. Okay, like this. Like this. Like this. 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 Yeah. Uh. There we go. There, now I just gotta get the sheet on there, get the bedding in here, get all my stuff ready to go. Actually, no, I gotta put the sheet on before I put my pillow back there. And we can head back home. Ah, there's like a thousand other projects I need to get finished yet too. But we got the big one done, that's all that matters. Have you seen my new dash camera yet? Oh yeah, it won't turn on now. Does it run on battery? Oh, it has to be plugged in, right? Yeah, I don't have it plugged in right now. It has uh, three cameras, one, two, three. I believe like these ones can flip around. I believe that uh, they're probably designed to have one camera facing the driver, one camera facing the passenger, one camera facing forward. I have them all facing forward. <laughs> I have this one facing this fender down here that one facing that side of my hood that way, and then there's one on the other side here facing straight forward. So I get a 180 degree picture in front of me. That's a story for another time though. Okay, here's all my stuff for the truck. We gotta get it in there. Where's my sheet? I think this is my sheet under here there. My floor towels are on the floor. Let's get this thing ready to go. This video turned out to be over 40 minutes long, all in one piece. I might have to split it up into two videos. <laughs> uh, so, like I was saying in the video, those of you who've been watching over the past few months, you know how much frustration I've had uh, with that heater not working properly, and it made me have to idle my truck more than I wanted to, which costs me money, a lot of money. And in some places, you're not even supposed to be idling your truck overnight. I mean, I'm thinking of New York here. I don't go there very often, but uh, it's just good to have that thing working. It's good to feel accomplished, like just 
knowing that I was able to fix it. Now I know how to do that. It's actually very easy. Uh, I thought it would be a lot harder. Once you know how to get it out of there, and it'll, I could probably do that in a couple of hours now instead of taking a whole day doing it. But half the day was just learning how to do it. I'm finishing this video up here about a week in the future. Not quite a week, a few days in the future. I, I took it out on a trip, used it through the night. It was minus 19 Celsius uh, last night in the truck. Bunk heater worked great through the whole night, kept the truck nice and toasty warm, and I was able to start up the truck in the morning and get going. So, 100% fixed. Finally, happy with that. So, no point in replacing it. I think the main problem was the glow plug in there. I think that's what the main thing was, because when it dropped on the floor, the guy accidentally dropped the old one on the floor, and it just broke in half. It was so brittle already and so old. I think that was the main problem. It wasn't igniting properly. So once that was replaced uh, and once all the soot was out of there too, it could breathe properly. Uh, that helped a lot too, I'm sure. But no point in replacing the whole thing when it's that easy to rebuild. Like next time this happens to me, oh, just an afternoon and clean it out, throw new gaskets and glow plug on in there and you're good to go. I, I really honestly thought it would be a much bigger job. I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to finish. I'm not a mechanic or a technician. I'm not. So, but it worked this time. One thing off the list of things to get done. But thanks for hanging out and watching this all right to the end. I'm not sure if I split this into two videos or not. I, I might have to. This has gotten pretty long. But that was, uh, that was the whole story of it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I have a new video coming then. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss it. We'll be back on the road.